Miss Juanita Bynum, Prophetess Juanita Bynum, would you make her welcome? I love you. I love you. And these people love you. TBN loves you. Nothing matters more. I'm overwhelmed at what I feel in this place tonight. The glory of the Lord is just resting in here. I was sitting in the back listening to uh, Sister Clark, and I'm telling you, what a revelation. What a revelation from God. And the thing about it is you can feel and sense the hunger and the thirst in the people of God to the point that um, it's almost bringing about a sense of uh, correction and rebuke to the eldership of the church. Yes. Because the people are after such a deeper depth. Wow. Yes, they are. And, for, and they're, they're so hungry until it's, it's forcing us not to give them warmed over milk. Yeah. It's forcing us to a place in God. Yes. You know, to, to, to feed them with manna from on high. And not just, not just the letter, but the spirit of the Lord in the letter, bringing about revelation. And so anytime I walk into an atmosphere like this and I feel the presence of God like this, I appreciate the people of God for putting a chastity belt yes, on man. my spirit. Yes, Lord. I, I appreciate, I, I love you all. I love the people of God. You know something too? It's ageless because, yes. you know, I work with the, the young people of my community yes. and uh, mostly high school and college age kids. Some of these kids have only been saved a year, two years, wow. three years, and their hunger challenges me. Yes. I mean, they are forcing me yes. to keep digging deeper and deeper yes, and yes, deeper yes, 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 because yes, yes. this younger generation, they don't want this frivolous, shallow no. stuff. No. The pizza party time and all that stuff, no. the little Bible curriculums and Bible no. clubs is over with no, they don't. because they have tasted the presence. That's right. They want the meat of That's the right. word and it is a challenge. That's right. But Lord, let it be. I want to be challenged. Yes. I want to dig too. deeper myself. Me too. Because I'm going with them in the glory. You know, and Karen, look, looking at, and, and I think this is why I, I you and, and Judy Jacobs, I, I, I love you guys so much because it is so hard to find people who have, uh, in so many words, made it to the major platforms and still have a hunger and a thirst just after God, you know, just doesn't matter what I got on. And I was watching you last night on television. I was watching your program last night and I don't know where you were ministering, but when you got down on your knees and I just said, that's a woman after my own heart right there. It's like, you know, because when it's time to, to worship God, people don't really understand the power of worship. They don't understand the power of the anointing. And, 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 and we take it for granted in our churches and it's just that 15 minute segment or that 20 minute segment where, you know, now it's like uh, taking up space and it's like the preliminary before everything else happens. But I believe that this is the season of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that this is the hour where the worship service will overtake the house of God. And the glory of God shall fill the house and people shall be changed. Because so many times, so many times we made worship just a thing that we do. And it's just something, you know, uh, I heard somebody say, you know, I went and bought some tapes and I, you know, I listened to the tapes and, and, and don't get me wrong, I've been blessed tremendously by, by integrity music. But I believe that there is another realm in the spirit. Yes, ma'am, there is. And that realm of worship is the realm where there is no written song. No, no. It's coming out there of the spirit. There is no program. No. You begin to sing out of your spirit. Yes, and the spirit of the Lord began to write the words that he's saying. Yes. And I believe that God's got some people in this hour that's going to tap the glory to a realm. Yes. That we're going to begin to sing what heaven is singing. Yes. We're going to begin to glorify God. Oh, my God. to 
such in a hurry and we have our own agenda but I'm gonna tell you something Karen there are some things in the last year or so that God has been really processing me through and I found something I found a newness in my worship I found something refreshing because I believe for every person that don't have time every pastor that don't have time for your church service to wait in the presence of the Lord there's going to be something that you're going to encounter in your personal life that's going to require you to the point that the only way you are surviving is that you tap the realm of God I believe there's some people that's why we feel the hunger in here tonight because there's some people in here tonight that is saying I'm going through something and my mother can help me my father can help me my sister can help me my brother can help me but oh When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord. God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost in here tonight. So many times we're looking for a word from somebody. Like people came in here tonight, you know, they're looking for a word, like, like, like hungry fish, looking for a word from somebody. But I'm telling you tonight that there is a word for every individual that is watching this program there is a word in the spirit for every person that is in that seat and what God is doing now he's even getting us to the point that your favorite preacher won't be able to give you the word that you need
I say to you tonight, Lord, arise, oh Lord, and demonstrate your power. Arise, oh Lord, demonstrate Say it one more time for somebody in television land. I'm asking God to do this in your home. Arise, oh Lord, and demonstrate your power right there in that home. I ask you that I want and demonstrate your power. Your power. We need your power. Ora Kasha. Right here, let me teach you something real quick. Right here is where you just love on him. Take 60 seconds and don't ask him for nothing, but just love on him. Tell him how much you love him. And I'm going to tell you, there's something that happens when you start loving on God. <laughs> Woo, yes, Lord. All I need is some people in here for the next 60 seconds. To just start telling him how much you love him. And if you don't know how much you love him, begin to think about the worst thing he's ever brought you out of. <laughs> begin to think about something that God broke that only God could break. Begin to think about something that God delivered you out of that only God could have done it. Begin to think about a way that he made when the door was shut in your face and you were told no. But God opened up a door and you know you love it. tonight if you're facing something right now if you're facing an impossible situation right now and you really don't know which way to turn I'm standing Karen 
in a situation that's a God thing? Have you ever have you ever been faced with something that's a God thing? And I'm talking to somebody tonight, right there in television land. You didn't turn the television on by accident, and I didn't plan to do this. I was supposed to be interviewed tonight by Karen, but the Spirit of the Lord knows because whenever you get a group of people that are standing in the situation where it's a God thing, then it obligates God to show up. And I'm here to tell you tonight that there is nothing impossible for God. That there is nothing too hard for God. And God said tonight, He has created this atmosphere on the program tonight because I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying that if I can just get you out of your situation and over into the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Lord is where your help is. Oh, you ought to reach up right now in that living room. Reach up right now in your bedroom. The devil is a liar. I break the spirit of depression over you now. I break every hindering spirit now. Satan, I command you to come. in the name of Jesus and I release the glory of God now I release the glory of God now I release the glory of God now 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 I release the glory of God now I release the glory of God now I release the glory now now there it is come on you got freedom come on there it is the devil has tried to make you feel like you're in bondage in your own home put that camera back on me I'm talking somebody right now. The enemy has bound you up in your house. The devil has stole your praise. But I want you to get up off of that couch. I command you now. Get up out of that bed. Open up your mouth. I don't care who you wake up and tell the devil I'm taking authority now. I'm taking authority back in my house. I'm taking authority over my bedroom. I'm taking it back. I'm taking back. I'm taking touch your neighbor and say take it back take it back take it back I believe somebody meant that I said touch your neighbor again tell your neighbor take it back take it back it's your praise it's your praise take it back the devil been trying to steal somebody's praise Steal your praise. The devil been trying to take your shout. But tell the devil tonight, I'm taking it back. Wait a minute. I just said something powerful there. That thing just hit my spirit. I feel like the children of Israel. When they got to the wall of Jericho, Karen, cannot happen until you shout. You don't get what I'm saying. And the devil has tried his best to kill your praise, to kill your shout. You better shout. Y'all. But let me tell you something. 
Some of y'all wouldn't have never been picked for war. You don't get what I'm saying. We in the army of the Lord. And let me tell you something about Indians. Are there any native Indians in here? See, when Indians, I watched a cowboy and Indian programs. And the cowboys would be drinking all night. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. They'd be partying all night before they go to battle. But when the Indians know that there's a battle coming, they start 24 hours before the battle. And you hear them over in their country going, hi ya 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 Somebody said they ought to go to bed. They ought to get some sleep. But the Indians got a secret. That warfare ain't no time to sleep. But you got to stay in the spirit of the battle. And when I watch the program, sister, the closer the battle gets, the closer it comes up daylight, they get louder. And by the time they get on the battlefield, they said, You know why? Because they got power. They got authority. You don't get what I'm saying. Let me prophesy this. What you going through now, you can't afford to keep your mouth shut. was going to do. It did not work. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. I wish I had somebody to go with me with that. I wish I had somebody to go with me. I wish I had a witness. I said what you thought was going to work. It did not work. How do I know that? Because I still got my prey. tonight I wish tonight as a prophet of God that I just had 33 people all I need is 33 the rest of y'all can go home all I need is 33 the rest of y'all can get y'all perks and tip on out of here the rest of y'all cute saints the rest of y'all that don't want to sweat but see I don't know about y'all but I'm working on something. You don't get what I'm saying. I got to sweat because I'm working on something. I got to praise him even if you don't. You don't get what I'm saying. I got to give him glory because every time I praise him, he draw nigh to the praises. Come on here, somebody. All I need is 33 people. And I don't mean, I don't mean a little bit of hand clap. Thank you, Jesus. I don't mean no little hallelujah. Lord, I praise you. I don't mean no little, no little bit to raise them up. I need 33. I don't care ragged or radical people. I need 33 people in here from the Stowfront Church then. I need 33 people here that ain't got no chandeliers in their church. You don't want to hear me tonight. I need 33 folk in here that ain't got no symphony. You don't hear what I'm saying. I need 33 people that understands the power of praise. To praise God for everybody in television land. Let the people know that this praise is for them. And whatever the devil thought he was going to stop, you're going to unlock it on their behalf. Now give him a praise.
Jesus. You know, I told my, I told my aunt, I said, I got ready to leave out the hotel. She said, you ain't taking no change of clothes. I said, no. I said, it's gonna be a cute interview tonight. I don't need no change of clothes. I ain't gonna sweat. I said, me and Karen gonna sit down and we gonna just talk. We gonna have a little chit chat. Just don't chit chat in Jesus. My aunt said, are you sure? I said, I'm positive. I said, because you know what? I really, I really don't feel the anointing on me. I said, I'm just going to go in here and just talk to Karen and, and we just going to chit chat. Y'all don't hear me. But see, the Holy Ghost starts speaking down in my spirit back there. He said, you don't need to chit chat. You need to open up your mouth and make the devil out of a liar. You don't hear what I'm saying. He said, that's what's wrong with us now. We trying to program God. Y'all don't hear me. That's why some of your churches is dead as I don't know what. Get the program out of God's way. And let the spirit of the Lord have his way. Let me tell you something. Let me leave this with you. Getting in the presence of the Lord can do more for you in five minutes. I didn't hear nobody say nothing right there than you can do for yourself in a lifetime. Can I leave you a little secret? When stuff start bothering you, start hollering. You don't hear me. When the devil step in, start praising. You don't hear what I'm saying. When the enemy comes in, start giving God a praise. Am I talking to any believers in here tonight? Because I guarantee you, you don't hear what I'm saying. You don't hear what I'm saying. I still see some of y'all with your lips all closed. Tears coming down your face. You look about full like a blowed up tadpole. Open up your mouth. Let the glory out. Let the power out. Put it on shot. We too quiet. And I heard the Holy Ghost tell me the other day. I don't need no more secret agents. I don't need no more private Christians. You don't hear what I'm saying. The Bible said let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I don't know what your Bible said. I said I don't know what your Bible said. I know y'all think I'm crazy. I know they talk about me in television land. But my Bible tells me, you don't hear what I'm saying, that the Lord shall deliver with a shout. The book of Revelation said that when no man could open the sea, when there was a weeping in heaven, because no man can open the sea, he said there was one that came and took the scroll out of the hand of God and he opened up the seal. And the Bible said, and the mouth of him that cried out began to destroy the oppressor, not the voice of him that whispered out. You don't hear what I'm saying. And I'm prophesying this right now. That a whole lot of quiet churches are about to be upset with the glory. You don't hear what I'm saying. Because there's a battle going on in the spirit. You don't hear what I'm saying. And you don't fight a battle with your mouth closed. Come on here somebody. You don't win a war with your mouth closed. But the Bible said, you don't hear what I'm saying. That when the people of God suffer with violence, the violence... You don't plead for it, you don't beg for it. You take it. I didn't think y'all heard what I said. You don't know what's in this atmosphere tonight. You don't know what's in here tonight. There's an anointing to take it. God, I wish I had somebody to believe the prophet. There is an anointing to take it. I said there is an anointing in here tonight to take it by force. Anybody that's watching tonight by telling, oh, there is an anointing.
that after tonight, I'm not asking the devil to take his hands off. God, all I need is one witness with me. I'm not asking you to take your hands off my children, off my finances, off my church, off my pastor, off my ministry, off of my mother, off of my father. I'm commanding you to take your hands off and I'm taking back the victory. You don't hear what I'm saying. You better give God a praise. How many minutes again? I got to go. I got to go. Let me help you with this. This gonna bless you right here. How many in the warfare? How many in the battle? All right, let me just tell you what God just spoke to me and said. You in your greatest strength right now. You didn't hear what I just said. You didn't hear what I just said. How many in this building is under an attack from the enemy? I mean a show enough diabolical attack. How many people in television land? Put the camera on me. How many of y'all right there is under attack? Raise your hand up. Right there in your living room. That's why there's participation. You right here with us. How many is under attack from the enemy? How many think that it's over? How many think the devil has won? Well, I'm here to tell you what God just spoke to me. He said, you in your greatest power right now. He said, you in your greatest anointing right now. I don't think you just heard what he said. You are in your greatest anointing. You are in your greatest anointing. This is the time that you bless his name. This is the time that you give God a praise because the Holy Ghost just spoke right there in television land that right there in the midst of that trial, you are in your greatest anointing. Let me make that clear. Your greatest anointing is not when you fast. Hobashaya. Hobashaya. Your greatest anointing is not because you shut in, but your greatest anointing comes upon you when the enemy comes in like a flood. You don't hear what I'm saying. When the enemy comes in like a flood, then the spirit of the Lord. Before I take this mic and lay it down, there's a prophetic word that you're going to speak out of your mouth. Lord have mercy, Jesus. I'm telling you, God's doing something. I don't know what's then got a hold of me. But I'm eating and sleeping and drinking. This weapons of power comfort. Because God said revival. He said revival is about to hit the country. He said revival is about to hit. Anybody that's watching August the 6th, August the 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th in St. Louis, Missouri, we're going to have a revival. We're going to have an old-fashioned revival. You don't hear what I'm saying. We're coming to lay out before God. We're coming to prostrate out before Him. We're coming to seek His face until He shows up. And we ain't leaving. We've already declared it to be so. That we're not leaving out of the anointing. Out of that auditorium until we got another anointing. We're not leaving out of there until we get a refreshing and a baptism in the Holy Ghost. I don't want no cute tongues. I don't want the same tongues that I've had for 10 years. The Bible said there's a time for refreshing. Anybody in here want a refreshing? Anybody in here that need a refreshing? It's time to break down all the props. It's time to break down the wardrobe. Come as you are. Come in your jeans and your t-shirt. It ain't no dress up conference. It's a breakthrough conference. It ain't no dress me up and show me how to put on lip liner. It's show me how to get in the presence of God. Show me how to tap the ram of God. You get me to prophesy in here. You give me the prophet side here. Some of y'all said, but I'm not a prophet. I beg the different. But the Bible said in the book of 1 Samuel that when Saul came under the anointing of Samuel and walked in under the company of the prophets, the Bible said the Spirit of the Lord jumped him, overtaken him, and he began to prophesy as if he had already been a prophet. Because the Bible said right there, and as I read this scripture before I leave today, the scripture said in the book of 1 
1 Samuel, the 10th chapter and the 6th verse. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightily and you will show yourself to be a prophet with them and you will be turned into another man. Now this is the part that God spoke to me tonight. He said, and when, when what? When the Spirit of the Lord come upon you. Is there anybody in here tonight that feels God? No, I'm going to ask you again. Is there anybody in here tonight that feels his presence? Because he said, when these signs meet you, do whatever you find to be done. For God is with you. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. If you can feel the anointed on you right now, then I'm here to prophesy to you that God is with you. Prophesying here. You give me the prophesying here. You give me the prophesying here. Something is about to break because the prophecy is coming out of your mouth. Because you're in the company of a prophet, you're being turned into another person. And where you walked in here and couldn't see your future, where you walked in here and didn't know which way to go, where you walked in here and was all confused and didn't know whether or not to give up or keep going, pastors. Some of you evangelists didn't know whether or not to give up or keep going. I want you to turn around the seven people, and I heard God tell me to tell you this, to turn around the seven people and tell them the spirit of the Lord is upon me. You don't know how powerful that is. Do it now. And when you get to the seventh person, you begin to praise God. Turn the seven people and say, the spirit. Don't say it smiling. Say it like you mean it. The spirit. The spirit. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Therefore, I cannot fail. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. All I need is three people tonight to just begin to say that out of your spirit, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's charging me. He's renewing me. He's restoring me. Blessings, blessings, oh, bless me indeed, enlarge my territory. Everybody sing with me. Everybody begin to sing that little praise with me. Because that's your new prophecy. You're not under a curse. Come on. Bless me. Bless me. Come on, sing it. Bless me. Oh, Lord. Thank you. 
like to take this time if you're watching tonight I'd like to take this time and take a moment to invite you to the weapons of power conference 2003 August the 6th through the 9th in St. Louis Missouri the information is on the screen go to our website register for the conference because it's your season for revival it's your season for the Spirit of the Lord to come upon you I'm telling you the anointing is all over this building is in your house right now it's upon all of us in this place right now and as we begin to give God a wave blessing in here as brother Marvin begin to tell the Lord to keep your hands upon me 